This is Anglia Examinations, England. Listening Examination Proficiency Level Paper FF114 Updated Version Instructions This paper requires you to listen to a selection of recorded material and answer the accompanying questions. You will hear each part of the recording twice. There will be a pause before each part to allow you to read the questions and other pauses to let you think about your answers. When you hear the tone, you should write your answers on the question paper. Write clearly in the spaces provided. You must ask any questions now as you will not be allowed to speak during the test. Listen to the first part of the test. Section L1 You will hear a guide speaking to visitors as they begin their tour of Upton Zoo. For questions 1 to 5, listen to the recording and tick the correct box. For questions 6 to 10, fill in the missing information. Hello everyone, my name's Jess and while we're waiting for the last few to join the group, let me tell you a few things about our wonderful zoo. Upton Zoo is home to 442 different species of animal, with 79 species of mammal and 155 of birds. That's an incredible total of 9,019 animals. However, the zoo began as a very limited collection of animals. Back in 1931, George Bardley decided to display his unusual pets in an area of his parents' plant nursery in Upton Estate. Customers came from across the country to buy rare flowers and bushes. While they were there, they also saw George's collection of pets, which were not for sale. At first, his collection consisted only of lizards. He later developed his collection to include snakes and parrots rescued from a nearby zoo. The original buildings which housed George's pets still exist and can be found just behind us, near the education centre. No animals live there now. That's where we keep our large quantities of animal food. The reptiles and amphibians are now housed in more luxurious accommodation near the penguin pool. Since the 1930s, the estate has grown to twice its original size. The most recent development is known simply as islands. Construction has begun and is due to be completed in 2016. It won't take any space away from the zoo, but will be an extension on new land, making the site around 10% bigger. All the animals in this project will be native to Asia and we're all very excited. Right, I think everyone's here now. The tour today will include all the major exhibit areas, like the Rhino Reserve and Monkey Planet, and conclude at around 4pm by the elephant enclosure. You will have walked about three miles by then, so this will be a perfect opportunity to catch the water bus, which will bring you back to the main entrance. Make sure you keep your entry ticket somewhere safe, as you'll need to show it before you can board. Right, we're going to start with the penguin pool. It's now 10 to 11, and 11 is lunchtime for the 40 penguins, which is always fun to watch. Talking of lunch, if anyone has brought a packed lunch with them, our safari picnic lodge is a perfect place to eat and watch the animals. The restaurant there has plenty of delicious options for you. Now listen to the first part of the test again. Hello everyone, my name's Jess and while we're waiting for the last few to join the group, let me tell you a few things about our wonderful zoo. Upton Zoo is home to 442 different species of animal, with 79 species of mammal and 155 of birds. That's an incredible total of 9,019 animals. 
However, the zoo began as a very limited collection of animals. Back in 1931, George Bardley decided to display his unusual pets in an area of his parents' plant nursery in Upton Estate. Customers came from across the country to buy rare flowers and bushes. While they were there, they also saw George's collection of pets, which were not for sale. At first, his collection consisted only of lizards. He later developed his collection to include snakes and parrots rescued from a nearby zoo. The original buildings which housed George's pets still exist and can be found just behind us, near the education centre. No animals live there now. That's where we keep our large quantities of animal food. The reptiles and amphibians are now housed in more luxurious accommodation near the penguin pool. Since the 1930s, the estate has grown to twice its original size. The most recent development is known simply as islands. Construction has begun and is due to be completed in 2016. It won't take any space away from the zoo, but will be an extension on new land, making the site around 10% bigger. All the animals in this project will be native to Asia, and we're all very excited. Right, I think everyone's here now. The tour today will include all the major exhibit areas, like the Rhino Reserve and Monkey Planet, and conclude at around 4pm by the elephant enclosure. You will have walked about three miles by then, so this will be a perfect opportunity to catch the water bus, which will bring you back to the main entrance. Make sure you keep your entry ticket somewhere safe, as you'll need to show it before you can board. Right, we're going to start with the penguin pool. It's now 10 to 11, and 11 is lunchtime for the 40 penguins, which is always fun to watch. Talking of lunch, if anyone has brought a packed lunch with them, our safari picnic lodge is a perfect place to eat and watch the animals. The restaurant there has plenty of delicious options for you. Now listen to the second part of the test. Section L2 You are going to hear five speakers talking about their first day back at work after the summer holidays. For questions 1 to 10, choose the correct answer, A, B or C. Speaker 1 I knew it would be difficult to get up early after a holiday, so I was careful to pack my briefcase the night before and set the alarm with time to spare. Checking the car was something that never crossed my mind. I just assumed that I'd jump in and it'd work fine. Of course, it's not been used for three weeks, and the engine was totally dead. We don't live anywhere near the bus route, so I couldn't even catch the bus. To cut a long story short, by the time I got to work, I was expecting my boss to be really angry. I've seen him lose his temper before with colleagues who've turned up late. But he took it really well today. He just waved and asked if everything was all right. Speaker 2 I'd always been interested in buildings and how to make the best of the inside space. I also loved art at school, all that sketching and painting. This combines the two, I suppose. My first flat was brand new. I bought it after seeing the architect's plans and spent weeks working on colour schemes and finding nice furniture. A friend of mine liked the results and asked me to do hers, then someone else, and so on. How long I'll carry on, I don't know. It suits me at the moment as I've got young sons and can fit my work around them. I can work when I want, but sometimes I struggle for ideas. Sometimes people ask for really odd things. I don't enjoy those jobs, and a bit more money would certainly be nice. Speaker 3 I've just come back from holidaying around Asia. It probably sounds unreasonable of me to be jealous of colleagues who are going on business trips. But I've been here six years and have never been given one business trip. 
I know the budget's tight, and next year there may be some chance. But I've only been back a day, and I feel like this already. Answering calls from angry customers, and listening to their moaning, that's all I ever do. The new boss started today too. He keeps walking round, telling jokes, and thinking he's really witty. He just gets on my nerves. I know he's trying to be friendly, but I wish they'd got someone more intelligent. Speaker 4 My wife always books our annual holiday. She usually chooses well, although we have had one or two nightmares over the years. I never fully relax until we get there, and I thought the West Coast might be a bit boring. I was so wrong. The hotel was outstanding, and there was loads to do. It was just perfect. A fortnight was enough, though. I was starting to look forward to home-cooked meals. We definitely want to go back next year, but it took us three years to save for that holiday. I need to earn more money. I'm not going to win the lottery and retire out there. I can't just resign and hope to get a better job. But I've heard there's a vacancy in management, and I'm going to apply. So that's my plan for the next 12 months. Speaker 5 It was nice to have a chance to catch up with everyone today. Students don't come back until tomorrow, so today was a staff training day and we had some time to get ready. Most others were preparing lessons for the term and making their classrooms look nice. I only needed to check my medical room was as tidy as I left it and check and order any supplies to deal with the dozens of scratched knees and splinters. Sue, who works on reception, was off today, so I answered the phone a lot too. After lunch, we had to attend a training course. Understandably, these trainings are usually focused on education, which doesn't have anything to do with my job. It was reasonably short, so I can't complain. Now listen to the second part of the test again. Speaker 1 I knew it would be difficult to get up early after a holiday, so I was careful to pack my briefcase the night before and set the alarm with time to spare. Checking the car was something that never crossed my mind. I just assumed that I'd jump in and it'd work fine. Of course, it's not been used for three weeks and the engine was totally dead. We don't live anywhere near the bus route, so I couldn't even catch the bus. To cut a long story short, by the time I got to work, I was expecting my boss to be really angry. I've seen him lose his temper before with colleagues who've turned up late. But he took it really well today. He just waved and asked if everything was all right. Speaker 2 I'd always been interested in buildings and how to make the best of the inside space. I also loved art at school, all that sketching and painting. This combines the two, I suppose. My first flat was brand new. I bought it after seeing the architect's plans and spent weeks working on colour schemes and finding nice furniture. A friend of mine liked the results and asked me to do hers, then someone else, and so on. How long I'll carry on, I don't know. It suits me at the moment as I've got young sons and can fit my work around them. I can work when I want, but sometimes I struggle for ideas. Sometimes people ask for really odd things. I don't enjoy those jobs, and a bit more money would certainly be nice. Speaker 3 I've just come back from holidaying around Asia. It probably sounds unreasonable of me to be jealous of colleagues who are going on business trips. But I've been here six years and I've never been given one business trip. I know the budget's tight and next year there may be some chance. But I've only been back a day and I feel like this already. Answering calls from angry customers and listening to their moaning, that's all I ever do. The new boss started today too. He keeps walking round, telling jokes and thinking he's really witty. He just gets on my nerves. 
I know he's trying to be friendly, but I wish they'd got someone more intelligent. Speaker 4 My wife always books our annual holiday. She usually chooses well, although we have had one or two nightmares over the years. I never fully relax until we get there, and I thought the West Coast might be a bit boring. I was so wrong. The hotel was outstanding, and there was loads to do. It was just perfect. A fortnight was enough, though. I was starting to look forward to home-cooked meals. We definitely want to go back next year, but it took us three years to save for that holiday. I need to earn more money. I'm not going to win the lottery and retire out there. I can't just resign and hope to get a better job. But I've heard there's a vacancy in management, and I'm going to apply. So that's my plan for the next 12 months. Speaker 5 It was nice to have a chance to catch up with everyone today. Students don't come back until tomorrow, so today was a staff training day and we had some time to get ready. Most others were preparing lessons for the term and making their classrooms look nice. I only needed to check my medical room was as tidy as I left it and check and order any supplies to deal with the dozens of scratched knees and splinters. Sue, who works on reception, was off today, so I answered the phone a lot too. After lunch, we had to attend a training course. Understandably, these trainings are usually focused on education, which doesn't have anything to do with my job. It was reasonably short, so I can't complain. Now listen to the third part of the test. Section L3 You are going to listen to part of an interview with actor Jason Evans. Answer all the questions below by marking the correct box with a tick. Now, I've heard it said that you always wanted to be on TV, ever since you were three or four. What attracted you to acting so young? Well, it's always been what I wanted to do, but the reasons for it have changed. As a teenager, I wanted to be like those funny men on TV, but as I got slightly older, I got more obsessed with Hollywood and its people. I wanted the Hollywood life. But initially, way back in those early years, I truly believed that if I was on TV, I could do all the crazy things my TV heroes could do. Jump over buildings, travel through time. That's what a three-year-old thinks. But most three-year-olds don't get to achieve their dream. Only very few get to become an actor or a spaceman or whatever. How did you get your first acting job? Most of these things come down to who you know. My parents weren't into the acting scene. They thought it was a waste of time and that I should forget those fancy ideas. My dad and his dad before him had worked long, hard hours building up their company. Grandma liked singing, but that was about the extent of it. But my uncle was artistic. He wasn't an actor, but he was artistic. And artists attract artists, and actors are artists, aren't they? Anyway, I was pretty close to him, and it was through him that I met the director, Seb Winters. I was only about 16 at the time. He offered me an audition. Now, over the years you've appeared in over a dozen films. Which of the roles have you enjoyed playing the most, and are there any you didn't enjoy? I'm probably most famous for my portrayal of the young man unlucky in love. I've played that type of character three or four times, but each with their own identity. So it wasn't boring or anything, and let's face it, they made me famous. Particularly the character of Joss Tweed in Romantic Break. Several years ago, I played a prisoner in Lock and Key, a guy at the beginning of a life sentence for killing his family. It may have been depressing subject matter, but I loved every minute of it. Strangely enough, the role I enjoyed least was also prison-related. It was in Murder One, and I played a guard who wanted to take revenge on certain prisoners for their crimes. The character was actually a bit dull. 
And what about your most recent film? What can you tell us about that? Well, it's called A Wanted Man, and I play the lead role, a homeless man who you are led to believe has fallen on bad times, hence his situation. However, all is not what it appears to be. It's not a laugh a minute kind of film, this one, but it's gripping. There are secret agents and undercover cops and murder, a real mixture of fear and excitement. There's an element of romance, but overall, it's fast paced and pretty fantastic. Where was the movie made? I assumed it was made on the west coast of America because it looks all Californian, but my sister tells me I'm wrong. I'm afraid she's right. Amazingly, the original book is actually set in London, England. Most of the filming, though, was done in a small town called Caborca in Mexico. It's probably only 50 miles or so from the border with the USA, but feels quite different to Hollywood. Despite the location change, the story has remained faithful to the original book, which I think is a really good thing because the book was excellent. Now listen to the third part of the test again. Now, I've heard it said that you always wanted to be on TV, ever since you were three or four. What attracted you to acting so young? Well, it's always been what I wanted to do, but the reasons for it have changed. As a teenager, I wanted to be like those funny men on TV, but as I got slightly older, I got more obsessed with Hollywood and its people. I wanted the Hollywood life. But initially, way back in those early years, I truly believed that if I was on TV, I could do all the crazy things my TV heroes could do jump over buildings, travel through time. That's what a three year old thinks. But most three year olds don't get to achieve their dream. Only very few get to become an actor or a spaceman or whatever. How did you get your first acting job? Most of these things come down to who you know. My parents weren't into the acting scene. They thought it was a waste of time and that I should forget those fancy ideas. My dad and his dad before him had worked long, hard hours building up their company. Grandma liked singing, but that was about the extent of it. But my uncle was artistic. He wasn't an actor, but he was artistic. And artists attract artists, and actors are artists, aren't they? Anyway, I was pretty close to him, and it was through him that I met the director, Seb Winters. I was only about 16 at the time. He offered me an audition. Now, over the years, you've appeared in over a dozen films. Which of the roles have you enjoyed playing the most, and are there any you didn't enjoy? I'm probably most famous for my portrayal of the young man unlucky in love. I've played that type of character three or four times, but each with their own identity. So it wasn't boring or anything, and let's face it, they made me famous, particularly the character of Joss Tweed in Romantic Break. Several years ago, I played a prisoner in Lock and Key, a guy at the beginning of a life sentence for killing his family. It may have been depressing subject matter, but I loved every minute of it. Strangely enough, the role I enjoyed least was also prison related. It was in Murder One, and I played a guard who wanted to take revenge on certain prisoners for their crimes. The character was actually a bit dull. And what about your most recent film? What can you tell us about that? Well, it's called A Wanted Man, and I play the lead role, a homeless man who you are led to believe has fallen on bad times, hence his situation. However, all is not what it appears to be. It's not a laugh a minute kind of film, this one, but it's gripping. There are secret agents and undercover cops and murder, a real mixture of fear and excitement. There's an element of romance, but overall, it's fast paced and pretty fantastic. Where was the movie made? I assumed it was made on the west coast of America because it looks all Californian, but my sister tells me I'm wrong. 
I'm afraid she's right. Amazingly, the original book is actually set in London, England. Most of the filming, though, was done in a small town called Caborca in Mexico. It's probably only 50 miles or so from the border with the USA, but feels quite different to Hollywood. Despite the location change, the story has remained faithful to the original book, which I think is a really good thing because the book was excellent. That is the end of the listening test. You will now have three minutes to check your answers. Your listening paper will then be collected.